I'm Matthew Burchette. 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 And this is Behind the Wings. I'm here with Kathy Mayer, and she's the program director for Flight for Life Colorado. Kathy, thank you so much for having us today. You're so I know a little bit about Flight for Life, but can you give us kind of the elevator speech of how you guys got started? Sure. We were started in 1972, we were the very first civilian helicopter program in the country. It all started at St. Anthony Hospital in response to three things, helicopter pilots and, and medics coming back from Vietnam who saw the value of the helicopter saving lives in that setting. The prospect that the 1976 Olympics were going to be here in Colorado, no good way to move injured yeah. athletes or spectators from that venue down to Denver. And third, the tragedy of the Wichita State football oh, team's right. airplane up on Loveland Pass, where there was greater loss of life than maybe there needed to be if we'd had a better way to get to those patients. Now, how do you manage such a, an immense organization. You've got helicopters, you've got fixed wing assets, you've got people, nurses, I mean everything. How do you manage all of that? Well, we have a wonderful communication center right here at St. Anthony that's kind of the nerve center of Flight for Life. Would you like to see it? You bet. All right. Let's go. Let's go. So this is literally the nerve center. Mm -hmm. How are you guys linked into 911? I mean, if, could somebody call you directly, or how does that work? Well, more typically, the comm center here takes calls from 911 centers. So, a fire department, okay. an ambulance has responded to a patient and they are requesting the helicopter. So, that 911 center will contact this communication center and request a response by Flight for Life. Okay. So, how does all of this, how do you guys work with the FAA then? Are you your own kind of control tower? We're a control tower in that this comm center is monitoring and coordinating all of our vehicles, not just air, but ambulances as well, and all of the patient movement and the patient information that has to be relayed back okay. and forth. Our pilots are still talking to air traffic control and sure. to the towers as they pass through controlled airspace. So the comm center doesn't do that but it does everything else that goes into launching a flight or an ambulance or a fixed wing airplane en route to a patient. And obviously you're staffed 24 seven. We are, yep. Wow. Yeah. All right, so I've got one last question. Are you guys robots? Because <laughs> how do you do all of this? We aren't robots, we are real people in this room, but these guys are very, very good at their jobs. They handle yeah. about 20,000 phone calls a year they track all of our vehicles, all of our people, all of our patients in here, and they are That's very, amazing. very good at their jobs. Me being me, can we go see a helicopter? <laughs> we can. Oh, bam, let's go <laughs> check that out. So Kathy, we're literally right outside of where the helicopter lands, right outside the helipad. How many helicopters do you guys have typically in a day? Well, we have six helicopters in service and one dedicated spare that we can put into service when we're doing a special event like the World Cup, or if one of the six goes down for maintenance, then we bring the spare online so we're not out of service. Our helicopter volume on an annual basis is about 2,000 to 2,200, and the rest are split between our fixed wing airplanes and our ground ambulances. See, that's something I didn't know. So Flight for Life not only having helicopters, but you guys have two King Airs, mm -hmm and then a Learjet. Right. So, how do I get on the Learjet? Not that I want to. <laughs> well, the Lear is our long distance airplane. We use it for flights that are longer than 400 miles one way, but it's also the second airplane out of Denver. So if the King Air is already out on a trip, the Learjet would take that trip. Our average one way mileage in this program, when we look at all of our helicopters, is about 70 miles. So we're really not wow. doing a lot of work close to metro areas, unless it's a mass casualty incident or a patient has to be extricated and then needs a very quick trip to the hospital. But most hmm. of our flights we're traveling some distance for. Wow, I did not know. For some reason I just had it in my mind that you guys were very localized, but that's yeah. not the case at all. No, no. Okay. We cover over 90,000 square miles just in Colorado, so we're wow. roaming around out there quite a bit. So. There's a helicopter out there. Can I go check that out? 
Absolutely. In fact, there's a pilot out there right now. Ed's there. He'd be happy to talk to you. Thank you. This is awesome. I'll be right back. All right. Now, I say this a lot, but how cool is this? This is an A-star Flight for Life helicopter, and I'm with the pilot, Ed Stinby. Ed, thank you so much for being on this episode. My pleasure. Can you give me a quick rundown of this helicopter? Yeah, so this is an uh, Airbus uh, AS350. It's an A-star helicopter. It has uh, excellent high-altitude uh, performance capabilities. Um, it's kind of a tight package, but it has great horsepower and enables us to get up into the backcountry in Colorado and operate where we do. Now, obviously, you can only fit one person in here, correct? That's right. We only transport one patient at a time in this aircraft. Okay. And then it's you and how many other people? We fly with a uh, flight nurse and a paramedic is our typical uh, crews. At times, we will fly with two flight nurses. They pretty much call it a, a flying emergency room. We, we have everything in there to maintain uh, ICU patients, uh, trauma patients, um, take care of them. All right. I'm sure you've had this question a million times. Well, what's your hairiest pickup? Um, you know, to be honest, as the pilot, we try to uh, remove ourselves from uh, whether it's a, a hairy scenario um, or, or a patient that's just going to enter facility. We, we try to just focus on safety of flight. Um, but from a pilot's perspective, operating in the high country here is, is probably what uh, is the most challenging thing for us. When we're doing backcountry operations, um, landing 13,000 feet plus. Oh, yeah. uh, a lot a big, of downdraft and that kind of stuff. The Up winds drafts, in Colorado yeah. uh, are always something to contend with. Um, and then make sure we have the proper performance to get in there and safely conduct those operations. What's it like to fly in one of these things? It's amazing. It's the it's best job. I enjoy every day getting out there and get to do it. We don't want to fly uh, because when we typically do, somebody's yeah, hurt. But the opportunity when we get to go out there and put our skills to use is very rewarding. All right, I gotta ask, is there any way I can fly in this thing? Actually, yeah. You wanna do a, a mock scenario? Yeah. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Oh my God, this is gonna be so cool. Let's go. Lifeguard 1, I've got San Anthony's Emergency Department online. Go ahead with your report. San Anthony's Hospital, this is Flight for Life. I'm out to your facility with a 50 year old male drawn from a horse in a 15 foot embankment. He also has the signs of significant abdominal trauma. His current vitals are a heart rate of 145. His blood pressure is 75 over 42. We are also hanging blood at this time. We are requesting T10 activation. We will be at your facility in approximately seven minutes for a cold offload. Lifeguard 1, copy that. We will activate a trauma room 10 response on your arrival, and we'll see you in seven minutes. Whew. That was intense. How'd you do? I'm alive. Thanks to you guys. Um, thank you so much for having us here and for what you guys do every day. It's amazing what you do and we are all so grateful to Flight for Life. You're welcome. Um, Guys and gals, thank you so much for watching. This was a little bit of an intense episode, but hey, I'm fine. If you've got questions or comments, please go to our Facebook or our website, and we will answer them. And if I can't answer them, Kathy certainly can, our resident expert. So Kathy, thanks again. You're very welcome. It was a lot of fun, actually. I don't ever want to be here again.